Why is Chainsaw Man so good? I made a video about my initial thoughts on this anime a few months ago where I mainly talked about how unique the characters were, but there is so much more to the anime than the characters. The thing that really caught my eye was the intriguing world Fujimoto built within the story, and so that's what we're going to be analyzing today. We'll focus on the world building and how the story structure aids it. We'll also be touching on potential plot holes and mysteries that this season has been building up. So without further ado, let's dive into the horrifying world of Chainsaw Man. Right off the bat, this anime sets off a dark tone by displaying our protagonist living an extremely appalling life. Denji inherited an insane amount of debt from his father who committed suicide, so he essentially was forced to work as a slave for the mafia by hunting devils for them. Not to mention he sold one of his nuts, eyes, and kidneys and that barely even put a dent in the debt he owes. The choice to make Denji's life this crappy was definitely an interesting one because despite the existence of devils, most people seem to be living normal lives. It's not like an apocalypse situation where society has collapsed and everyone is fending for themselves. On the contrary, it seems as if society was able to adapt to these devils and thrive nevertheless. The purpose of having Denji's life be so crappy was to set a dark tone for the show by having us, the audience, have to deal with some of the more horrific aspects of the world that most people don't even interact with. In this world, most people don't even have to deal with hostile devils, as that's something only public safety devil hunters are obligated to do. From episode 1, we get to know about the worst parts of the world before we get introduced to normal society. And in the first arc, we get to learn quite a bit about devils. Since Denji had a devil as a pet, it somewhat foreshadowed the idea of devils and humans working together. We technically even see our first devil contract with a Yakuza making a contract with the zombie devil to acquire more power. We don't know all of the details of their contract, but it seemed as if the Yakuza got screwed over since they all became mindless zombie servants to the zombie devil. Two huge things we learned about devils in this arc was one, devils can take over human corpses. Those devils are called fiends. And two, devils have the ability to give their heart to a human, essentially reviving them into a half-human, half-devil hybrid. During the Bat Devil arc, we learn that devils can heal from almost any injury after consuming blood. It doesn't even matter if it's human or devil blood, as the Bat Devil was able to heal after consuming Denji's blood, and we later see that Denji is able to heal after consuming devil blood. This could imply that humans and devils are more similar than we may think. They do come from humans after all, since they are created by collective human fear of something like bats, zombies, leeches, etc. The greater the fear, the more powerful that devil will be. So because so many people fear guns, the gun devil is one of the strongest devils in the world. This explanation was done really well in the show because not only did it add to the world building, but it hyped up a really powerful villain. Fear is a qualitative measurement, meaning you can't really put a number to the amount of fear you have for something like spiders and actually determine if it's higher or lower than your fear of scorpions. However, despite the fact that you can't put a number to it, you do have a general idea idea about how you feel about certain things and about your own varying degrees of fear. So in Chainsaw Man, we saw how powerful the zombie devil, the bat devil, and the leech devil was, and for me, these things are all pretty low on the fear scale, yet they were all pretty powerful. Personally, I am not terrified by guns or anything, but I would put them significantly higher on the fear scale than zombies, bats, and leeches. So because I already have a feel for how scared I personally am of these things, I can somewhat gauge how strong the next devil will be, and that's just really cool and creative. I know a lot of people don't like it when reviewers compare anime to another anime, but I recently just watched Jujutsu Kaisen, and I noticed a lot of similarities between devils and curses. Curses. There are plenty of differences too that help make these series feel unique, like the fact that curses are invisible while devils are clearly visible, but there are way too many similarities for me to ignore. Curses are created from negative emotion and devils are created from human fear, which would be categorized as a negative emotion. Both of their strengths corresponds to the amount of fear or negative emotion people put into that devil or curse. And not to mention, both devil hunters and jujutsu sorcerers use devils and curses respectively to defeat devils and curses. But despite by all these similarities, the biggest difference would probably be the way these characters use their powers. In Jujutsu Kaisen, the sorcerer's curse powers come from within, while in Chainsaw Man, it seems like the only way to use devil powers is to make a contract with an actual devil. It seems like it's more of a summoning thing rather than having your own superpowers, and that actually seems way more realistic to me for some reason. I know it's crazy to claim that one unrealistic fantasy is more reasonable than another, but it makes sense to me because all powers can be traced back to a devil, which can be traced back 
back to a specific fear. For example, Aki's devil contract can be traced back to the fox devil, which can be traced back to a fear of foxes. I also felt like it was more grounded because you have to give something up when you summon the devil, meaning it's not an ability you can use recklessly. We know Aki has to give skin from his arm every time he summons the fox devil, and we've seen a couple other examples of what people have to sacrifice in later arcs as well. In the Eternity Devil arc, we learn a bit about the ghost devil through Himeno, who has a contract with it. She had to sacrifice her right eye permanently to have free use to a single arm of the ghost devil. While this is a pretty large trade, it was definitely worth it because it's actually extremely overpowered. It can phase through objects and people while simultaneously touching other objects and people. It was able to choke power and she wasn't able to grab the arm or the fingers to stop it from choking her. There may be more to learn about this ability, but we'll circle back to it later. The main devil of this arc was the Eternity Devil, and it's honestly a really interesting concept to fear eternity as it can encompass multiple types of fear. The one I hear about the most is the fear of living or existing forever, which is something I can't completely understand. It's a fear I more commonly hear from older people, so maybe I will understand it better with time. But my understanding of it is that the thought of existing forever is very scary because it would be a painful existence. The way I may fear eternity would be more about fearing how space and time is so much more than I can even comprehend. In all of space and time, me as an individual have little to no significance, and that is somewhat frightening. The battle between eternity and chainsaw was very interesting as well. It was well animated animated, gruesome, and it makes you realize that Denji is more important than we all initially thought. But the theme of the battle was what really caught my attention. We saw earlier that the Eternity Devil's specialty was trapping people on one floor in order to slowly but surely drive everyone crazy, but the only person who didn't let the Fury of Eternity affect them was Denji in power. It made Denji the perfect opponent because he didn't fear the concept he was facing. Not only that, but he managed to flip the Eternity Devil's fear on itself by making it fear having to live through eternal pain. This is the first and only time this season where we've seen a devil that fears the concept that created it. It makes me wonder if other other devils will be defeated this way because that would be something I would love to see. The last arc of the season, the Katana Man arc, started off really dark and really fast with Makima shot in the head, Kobeni and another dude whose name I didn't completely memorize died, and a random dude attacked Denji, Power, Aki, and Himeno out of the blue. The random guy turned out to be related to the mafia boss who enslaved Denji, and he merged with the devil in the same way Denji merged with Pochita. It was extremely intense right off the bat, and that decision was probably made to remind the audience how horrifying and terrible this world truly is. One of the most horrifying things to happen was the death of Himeno because I was pretty fond of her character. She was able to make a new contract with the ghost devil by giving all of herself in exchange for temporarily using all of the ghost devil's power. One thing I noticed about the ghost devil in this arc compared to the last one was that it didn't seem as powerful. Before it was able to choke power while simultaneously being intangible, but it seemed to have lost that ability in this arc. As a matter of fact, I don't think the ghost devil face do anything in this entire arc. The two scenes vividly come to mind when I think about how the ghost devil's powers were used in this arc. The first was when Himeno summoned the full devil and it had an advantage over the katana man. For some reason, the ghost devil decided to lower its head over the katana man's head blade and let it pierce it instead of just phasing through it. Then the snake got summoned and actually eats the ghost devil instead of phasing through. The other scene I think about is when the snake girl summoned the ghost devil to fight Aki and it started choking him like it was choking power previously. While it's choking him, you could clearly see Aki putting his hands on the ghost devil the same way Power was trying to when she was getting choked. To me, this seems like a plot hole or a major nerf, but it may be possible that there is more to the ghost devil that we know about. Maybe Aki and the other guys knew some secret to bypass its phasing abilities. It's just really odd since a lot of the world building is done very well, but this small part seems like it wasn't thought out well enough. That aside, like I was talking about earlier, the Katana Man was very interesting because he seems to be the Katana equivalent of Denji. I can only assume he got his powers in the same way Denji got his by merging with the Katana Devil, but maybe there are other ways to achieve this similar hybrid form. The protagonist obviously doesn't care, so I don't expect to be exploring this anytime soon, but I definitely am curious. One thing I noticed was the Katana Man's power seemed to be much more suitable for fighting than Denji's is, which actually makes a lot of sense now that I'm saying this out loud since Katanas were made for fighting while chainsaws were made for cutting trees and stuff. Whenever Denji runs out of blood, the chainsaws will stop spinning which makes them somewhat useless while if the katana man ran out of blood his blades are still sticking out so they would be completely usable we finally got to see aki's ace contract he was keeping up his sleeve 
the Curse Devil. I'm gonna be completely honest, it was a pretty underwhelming ability. It came off as underwhelming because it didn't even work against the intended target. The Katana Man surviving that attack was supposed to demonstrate how strong he truly was, but because we've never seen this ability used before and it was supposed to be his trump card, it didn't seem like much to be amazed by. Makima was revealed to have an insane ability and I'm still not completely sure of how it works. It seems like she can sacrifice one person's life to kill another person from far away. It seems like the only condition needed is for her to know the name of the target and to have a sacrifice speak that name out loud. Having an ability this crazy makes me even more curious to know who she is and what her objectives are, not to mention what kind of devil contract even allows for an ability like that. In spite of my minor complaints, I can't deny that Fujimoto created an insanely interesting world, and I can't wait to see more of it in the second season. One thing I'm still curious about is why some devils are extremely bloodthirsty while others are not and are actually okay working for humanity. We got some small explanations here and there, but there may be more to it than meets the eye. I'm also curious about if devils really ever die, because the fear of them is still very much alive. Like if the gun devil gets killed, people would probably still fear guns, so would he just be reincarnated? Maybe he would just be a carcass until someone fed him blood to revive him. I don't know. But I'm pretty confident that there are more interesting things I will learn about the horrifying world of Chainsaw Man in the future.